back. We're back. This is Renovate and Build with Jim and Sandra, powered by Fair Trade Works. This is home. Now I'm finally where I belong. Where I belong. Yeah, this is home. Hello, good morning, and this is where you belong. It's Renovate and Build with Sandra and Jim. Glad you could join us here this morning as we talk construction. Sandra, I, never thought you, I bet you never thought you'd said that. You'd get up every Saturday morning bright and early to talk construct about the construction industry for 60 minutes. No, I can honestly <laughs> say I never thought that this would be an industry that I would think was so interesting and exciting, Jim. But it's truly the diversity of the industry that I think still amazes me after almost three years in the industry, you know, learning about trades to the development of industry, the industry to design and green solutions, and of course, the science of the industry. And our next guest represents the last segment of the industry, Sandra. Dr. Nemi uh, Banthia is a researcher and professor of civil engineering at UBC and his speciality is creating smart building products. He joins us now on the phone. Good morning, Dr. Banthia. Well, good morning to you. Dr. Banthia, can you explain to us what smart materials are and what your research team has been doing and working on? Okay. Um, well, overall, when you look at these structures, you're looking at bridges or buildings they don't respond back at all to you. I think they're not ever communicating back to the users. Now, smart buildings or smart materials are the ones that allow that to happen. They allow the structure to respond back to um, not just tell us about its condition, not just tell us about the loading it's carrying, not just tell it about its, uh, you know, how, much, how safe it is, but it also at the same time can actually repair itself. It can actually you know, take mitigative measures if indeed there are certain conditions in that structure that, that require, uh, you know, uh, changes or that require, you know, basically some intervention, I think. So these are smart materials or smart buildings overall that can actually not only respond back, but I can also tell you and communicate back as to what those conditions are that they're going through. So what specifically has your team been working on? What kind of smart material? Okay, what we're working on are uh, two types of smart materials. And these are, first of all, uh, materials that can actually detect um, the condition in the, in the structure, for example. So they can detect stresses in the structure. They can actually respond back in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what, 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 what kind of load the structure is carrying, um, how far is it from developing a crack, and those kinds of things, actually. And second, second set of materials are actually the ones that can actually then respond to a, um, a, a condition um, that, that it has detected requires some mitigative measures and actually trigger those mechanisms in the material that would actually, uh, you know, in a way negate those conditions that are dangerous for the structure itself. Fascinating. So the bridge could actually speak back to us if there's a crack in it. Correct, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Nemi, what are you hoping? I know you've been doing a ton of research. What are you hoping to gain from this? I'm assuming you're just trying to get deeper and deeper into these kind of responsive materials and figuring out bed, bigger and better solutions. I, I think the two key words I would say are safety and sustainability. Um, you know, if you recall that bridge that collapsed in Quebec in 2006, the, the Concord overpass, that bridge was inspected the same week it collapsed. Wow. What that means is that we really don't understand really what condition our structures are in because it's very hard to look into concrete, basically. You don't know how much, what cracking has occurred, how much, how much corrosion has occurred in the reinforcement, which m takes it closer and closer to being unsafe. And since we don't know what, what, what condition the structure is in, what happens is a collapse can occur, and we would never know ahead of time that this collapse will take place. So... Coming from there, I think what these materials can do, and they can be, in, in fact, embedded in the, in the overall structure. Now, th what, what happens is these materials generally tend to be quite expensive. So what that means is you can't really build an entire structure with these materials, but you can actually embed small bits of this material as sensors in the structure itself. And then you can, you can actually interrogate and you can actually detect really what these sensors are telling you with respect, to the entire, or with respect to the overall condition of the structure. So what we're hoping that, first of all, these will make the structure safe. Um, and safety coming from really being able to know ahead of time that there is, you know, the structure is imminent or, or, or is going to it's sort of closer to collapse. 
uh, it can also tell us uh, ahead of time if there are any conditions that actually would require repair, for example. Now, if you look at uh, bridge decks, I mean, bridge decks is a very good example of where all the problems are in this country. We put a large amount of de-icing salts um, on our bridge decks, and what that leads to is, as you know, a large amount of corrosion in the reinforcing, uh, reinforcing steel. And that becomes a very large problem because we need to repair these bridge decks all the time. Now, generally what happens is we never know, uh, you know when that repair will take place or would be required until you start seeing these sort of signs of massive corrosion in the structure, uh, kind what is happening in the Patula Bridge, for example, right now. This is, this is the sort of the corrosion in the reinforcing steel. But these sensors can actually tell you much before the corrosion will start. This is very good because then I don't need to wait another, you know, several uh, years before I get to a point which is essentially a point of no return, and I have to replace the deck. Here, these sensors can be, can tell me way ahead of time that look, we are very close to corrosion now, and something needs to be done so that you don't have you don't encounter these very expensive repairs some time down the road. That's one thing. Second thing is on the sustainability side, I think. What, 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 what this also allows us to do, a lot of the designs that we perform today are over-safe. And that's what, one of the reasons, I think, why you have, you know, basically some of these structures that have lo lost half the section and still the structure is standing. What that means is we are actually over-designing a lot of our structures. So what these sensors can tell us is whether uh, what the actual loading conditions are and all the assumptions that we make in the actual loading on the structure can be f can be significantly tightened. And when you tighten these on all, all kinds of fudge factors we use in our designs, these structures can actually take us much closer to what the loading on the structure really and in real life would be, which means that you can actually make the structures slimmer, you can actually design the structures better, which actually leads into sustainability. Great efficiency. Mm -hmm. So what are your challenges in creating this, besides the cost, the smart building materials? What are some of the other challenges that your research team faces? Uh, one of the major challenges here is, I think, to try to understand really what that signal from a sensor is telling you. You know, if, imagine a structure, and we have some structures actually that have sensors in them. You get this sort of terabytes of data coming from the structure um, every minute, for example. Now, the challenge, of course, is to, 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 to manage the data. So it's essentially a big data type analysis you have to do on the structures to understand really what this data is telling you. Secondly, what you have to do is to avoid any false alarms. That is a real issue, actually, with the signals that come, come from these sensors because uh, it's, it's hard to, you know, unless you actually run a very sophisticated algorithm, it's very hard to tell um, whether a particular spike in the signal is actually coming from a distress in the structure or it's coming from some other condition in the structure that we probably are not aware of. And therein lies the challenge. I think I mean, you don't want to actually have these false alarms that we think, oh my God, the structure is closer to a failure, whereas that, that signal is actually telling you something completely different. So that is the other, other challenge of these things. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Renovate and Build with Jim and Sandra, and right now we're speaking with Dr. Nemi Banthia, a researcher and professor at UBC who is researching currently smart building products. Nemi, I have another question. Where do you believe smart materials are heading in the future, and how do you think it will not only help the construction teams but maintenance teams and the safety to the general public? I think it's, we, are, we are heading towards completely self uh, con self healing, self-regulating, self-repairing uh, structures. You know, for example, you could have these shape memory alloys. So right after an earthquake, if they do remember uh, what the initial shape of the structure was, they can actually spring back to their initial uh, configuration. Um, we're also looking at, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you've read this, but uh, there's major concern, for example, with dur durability of materials. So. If you had, say, timed release of certain chemicals in the structure, for example, uh, they could actually fix repairs. Um, you know, bacterial growth in concrete is a very large problem, and we are actually developing some, um, you know, smart systems 
whereby you can actually release biocides, and biocides are the ones that would actually, you know, kill, kill the bacteria. So you could actually release these biocides actually at, at you know, uh, at the right time. And so this time release can actually make these structures actually repair themselves, for example. So I think we are looking at maintenance-free structures in the long run, maintenance-free structures that are safe and maintenance-free structures that actually will cost a lot less, so they are actually sustainable as well because they would actually allow these repairs to take place in time. So is Canada at the forefront of this kind of research right now? Absolutely. I think Canada is definitely at the forefront. We have a number of structures which already have sensors in them. Uh, we already have numbers of structures that are being monitored. We are actually creating new types of sensors, and, and clearly we are uh, looking at, um, you know, activities in this country which are definitely placing us in the forefront of this uh, health monitoring type work. Well, you're definitely in fascinating work. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Banthea. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. We've been speaking with researcher and professor of civil engineering at UBC, Dr. Nemi Banthea. And we've come to the end of another 60 minutes here on Renovate and Build. Next week we'll be visiting and more to find out more in the latest in construction and development in this beautiful part of the GVA. Meg and Gary will be out shopping for the latest in dishwashers this week to bring you the best of their finds. Educators about they get more, how to get more youth into their, this incredible industry, which is so desperately needing new talent. So another full lineup ready for you next Saturday. Hope you'll join us then. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend. Up next on CL650, Tom Lucas and Sherry Brown for Re Radio Real Estate. Introducing a revolutionary new construction system. This is Renovate and Build with Jim and Sandra.